Welcome back to our chat. We're talking with the airport director here at Arlaman Airport. Have you got a big shopping list for the minister on things you need? I mean, before your time, Ann Reynolds was having to spend a lot of money on that extension and new fencing and, I don't know, uh, uh, the baggage controlling, which we saw today, which is fantastic. I mean, there's a couple of million quid just in those machines, isn't there? It's not a cheap business being an airport. No, and the cost of regulatory control is also quite problematic. However, again, part of the master plan, the di those conversations will be around what do we want to be. Um, being very purposeful of what, what shape, what size, what assets we need, and then over time phasing the, the spend for that. So in terms of a shopping list, it's one of those of, it's trying to work out what we need first and then going out and buying it. I'm not, I can't just sit here and say, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. Um, there's, naturally, you have a look at airports around the world and there's lots of sexy technology that can be there. None of it would necessarily fit within the context of Isle of Man. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to work out what type of airport we want to be and then going out and purposefully buying the pieces of kit and the, the assets that will allow us to get that. What can you say about the situation with air traffic? We keep hearing um, from Din parties, who's to blame? There's a lot of this going on. Um, but clearly, it's a very skilled job, and I appreciate the brakes are very, very important. Uh, are you on demand? Do you need more people? Is, you know, are you having a recruitment problem? Or is it nothing to do with you this end? So, so in terms of recruitment, we have um, the requisite number of ATCOs. However, those ATCOs, ATCOs are still, are sorry, our air traffic controllers. Right. Um, but our air traffic, some of those air traffic controllers are going, still going through training. Mm -hmm. um, some of them joined pre-pandemic. During the pandemic, the amount of availability of aircraft flying in stopped them from being able to go through their training as quick as possible. And even now, it takes a period of time in order to get them fully trained and fully validated to be full, um, fully validated at case in all the different positions that we have here at the airport. So in terms of actual, have I got a vacancy for an air traffic controller at the moment? No, I have the number that I need. However, there are people retiring. There will always be people that are moving on and, and will recruit to do that. Part of the issue with air traffic controllers is it can take three, two to three years for them to get fully trained up, um, but, it, but they can leave after three months with three months notice. So again, you always have that lag in the system of how you get the right amount of air traffic controllers. It's an incredibly in-demand job. Mm. Um, for example, Nats have just gone out and recruiting for all of their airports. Um, so they're in such high demand, getting them is quite difficult. Different routes into air traffic controller, you can go out and get um, fully qualified air traffic controllers. Um, they've already gone through college, they've already got endorsements in previous units. They still have to come here and learn how to operate at the airport and that can still take them 18 months to two years. Or you can do ab initio's homegrown talent. Um, again, the training pipeline for that is far longer. But again, they're almost enmeshed into the culture of Isle of Man, so that they'll typically stay longer. You need a mixture of the two, so it's quite a complicated one. In terms of air traffic control being the reason, air traffic control is quite a broad brush statement when people say there's air traffic control issues. The EasyJet flights typically fly many destinations before they get to the Isle of Man. They will pick up delays as they're flying into Zurich, into um, Faro, Porto, and all of the other um, nice exotic destinations. Those delays add up. Air traffic control has caused that. So when a pilot is out there saying air traffic control issues, a lot of people rightfully would probably assume, oh, it's the Isle of Man, it's the destination that we're going to. However, it could be the issues that they've picked up in the airspace, so broad, um, Bordeaux, Brest, and typically with weather, or even um, Gatwick has had a few issues with short-term I mean, echo sickness at the moment. Sorry, you have to be shut down by, what, 9.30 is it? Sort of so nine, no, 9.30 is our so published closing oh, time right. um, in summer. Yeah. Um, it's earlier than that generally. We can extend to 11. Um, however, that's one where it will be best endeavours because we're manned up to be able to cope to half nine. If we wanted to, to, to be able to resource up to being able to do 11, you would, again, need more probably need more air traffic controllers and well, again and and uh, fire brigade and baggage handlers and everyone else that's probably gone home by that stage well and, and and we'll have fire and all that will stop on as well um yeah. but typically with fire you have a little bit more resilience with air traffic control because it's such a small team missing one person can have a disproportionate right. impact on on what's going on you joined just post pandemic where we, uh, we annihilated the amount of flights i mean this place is empty huge bits of the day it's slowly picking up but do you I don't know if you knew how busy it was, I'm sure you do. Do you see that coming back? Yes, I think it will be a different type of experience and different routes and 
people have different reasons for flying. I think people are always flying. And, and part of the issue that we've seen in industry this summer is, is all of the experts always said that aviation would never come back until 24, 25. Suddenly in 2022, it switched on straight away. And the bigger airports weren't resourced up to be able to cope with that. In terms of getting resourced, so to work in an airport, you need a badge. I think these were taking 10 to 12 weeks to get. So again, it's not something that you can get quite quickly and then you have to train them and do all of that. So I think it's come back far quicker than everyone was expecting. Um, I think that's caused issues in the industry um, in some of the other airports that people fly to, which again, an airport can't exist on its own. You need to be able to fly to somewhere else. So the destinations that we fly to or the people where people fly from will always have an impact on what happens here. We are just one node within the system. Um, However, I think it will start to come back. It will get quite quick. I think people's behaviours will change. Mm. So lots of times people are flying into London five days a week. We're still seeing people flying into London. However, Thursdays, Fridays, the demand is less. So again, working with airlines, airlines are track what's going on and we'll have conversations with them. Okay. Just to finish with, in 12 months from you know, crystal ball gazing a little bit, how do you think the Art of Man Airport will be doing then? You know, up and totally running and lots of services and so I think services will come back slowly. I can see us getting more routes over the next twelve months. Um, I can see more airlines potentially coming in. Do I see it going back to the pre pandemic levels? Probably not just yet. Mm -hmm. um, I can see us getting quite a lot of passengers through of, of doing it. Again, an airport is it's airlines that choose where they fly. We can incentivize them, we can talk to them, but ultimately they'll fly where it makes them money. Incentivizing? Yeah. Well, they get, they get a little bit of holiday, don't they, when they start new routes or something? So, well, and, and different deals are done on how you protect it. And also, you don't want to oversaturate routes because one of the, the joys of um, being an island airport, as I said earlier on, of what makes it quite exciting is, is there's two roles to the airport. One is, as a commercial entity, trying to grow routes, trying to make money, a la Gatwick, Luton, a lot of the UK ones. But there's also one of how do we drive socio-economic benefit for the island? How do we help the island prosper? And again, it's you can't. That's a quite a careful tightrope to walk. Um, and again, so walking that tightrope quite carefully because what we don't want to lose is key core routes straight away.